Did you know that this hidden Swedish mine changed the history of the periodic table forever? Do I look like I know what a JPEG is? Four of the elements of the periodic table were named after this place and today I am taking them back to their birthplace. Let's go! Hey there, it's Elina, your friendly nuclear physicist, and today we are at the Itterby Mine, the place that led the foundation for so much of the modern science and technology that we use in our everyday life. I brought the elements of the periodic table from Engineered Labs with me, and I am ready to show you everything. Without further ado, let's get into it. In the Resaro Island in Sweden, not very far from Stockholm, we have the Itterby mine, which was very popular and very well used in the 18th century, mostly for extraction of feldspar and quartz. Feldspar were used for iron cleaning and quartz for very well-known porcelain and glass objects that we use today. However, around 1787, the attention was caught by the scientists and the chemists of the time at a very dense, dark mineral which actually switched pretty many names during the history of time but ended up being called gadolinite which they did do lots of studies on and try to understand what it contains and uh, there is a very popular research article which explains that the elements that are contained uh, in it are 38% unknown and they were quite difficult to separate because the elements contained in it are quite similar chemically and it took them quite a while with the chemical extractions to separate them and eventually they named four of the elements found in this rock after the mine itself yttrium, ytterbium, erbium and terbium were all found in gadolinite so I brought the Geiger with me to try and examine these rocks and see a little bit what they contain and if they are radioactive at all I mean we expect that some of them will contain some uranium and uh, I'm here to scout around and find out. So let's see, we have roughly background uh, dose at this point. So nothing much is happening. Oh, we have some increase. Yes, we found some uranium. We can see different holes here that uh, the miners probably used in order to basically break down and uh, extract all of these different rocks. And what we can see here is different shades. And as I said, both feldspar and quartz were mined from this mine. And they are not particularly color dependent because they can be white and pink, both of them. But what we can see and what we learned is that the more kind of dull rock is feldspar. So all of that here and the white one part here would be this however when it's a little bit more glossy and moist then it's quartz and that we can actually see down here on the ground if you can see it's a little bit more almost like oily like finish and that's quartz down here however their fame and recognition didn't just stop in the 19th century all of these elements are quite essential today for communication modern technologies and you guessed it even nuclear energy Yttrium behaves chemically like lanthanides and is often processed with them even though it sits just above them on the periodic table. It's widely used in YAG lasers, which actually is an acronym for Yttrium Aluminium Garnet Lasers, for industrial cutting and medical surgery. It's also used in white leads and in ceramic materials that require both heat and mechanical resistance. Yttrium also plays an important role in superconducting materials such as yttrium barium copper oxides which are under study for next generation power grids and also for fusion energy systems because they have high current carrying capacity. Terbium with atomic number 65 is used in green phosphors for displays but also in advanced materials like terphalon D, a magnetostrictive alloy which is used in actuators, sonar systems and vibration dampers. In nuclear context, terbium has a high neutron absorption cross-section which makes it a good candidate for radiation shielding materials. Erbium with atomic number 68 is most famous for its role in fiber optic communication. It's used in erbium-doped fiber amplifiers and allows light signals to travel thousands of kilometers without loss. Without erbium, as a matter of fact, long-distance internet infrastructure as we know it wouldn't be a thing. 
In the nuclear field, erbium is sometimes added as a burnable poison to fuel rods. It absorbs excess neutrons at the start of the reactor's fuel cycle, helping flatten the reactivity curve and improving control of the reactor. Iterbium, with atomic number 70, is a bit of a hidden gem. It's used in atomic clocks, particularly optical lattice clocks, which are now accurate enough to measure relativistic time dilation over just a few centimeters of altitude. It's also under study for use in quantum computing and advanced stress sensors embedded in aerospace in submarine structures. Its high neutron cross-section makes it another candidate for specialized shielding materials in nuclear systems. This quiet Swedish mine that is not really that big relevant to its contribution to science is probably the only mineral place that has contributed so significantly to discoveries that have to do with the periodic table as well as advanced technologies today. From modern communication even to nuclear power, the elements discovered here, all the four named after this place, as well as more discovered in this place, are all contributing to shaping our modern world today. So thanks to the engineered labs for these pretty cubes and if you want to experience your own real piece of science, you can order them from engineeredlabs.com and you can use my discount code YFNP to get a 10% off on any of the orders that you would like. That's how it probably sounded here when the dynamite was discovered. And we can see actually, interestingly enough, both by hand chopping off pieces of the rock by the miners and that's mostly the middle part of the rock that we see here that goes a little bit straight down. However, the more irregular shaped pieces, they were the ones that were blown up by the dynamite that was also discovered in Sweden in the 1866. And if you want to know even more details about the history of the mine, you can visit their website, which is quite nice and they have a lot of clips and videos that you can find out more information about. And they also do on site a few tours every summer, both in Swedish and English. Don't forget our giveaway in collaboration with Engineered Labs. We are giving away this stunning real-life periodic table as well as a t-shirt of your choice from My Science clothing line. So don't forget to choose an element of the periodic table that is your favorite. Let us know in the comments down below and DM me on Instagram what is your favorite element and why, because I'm curious. Follow my socials on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok and the YFNP clothing line. Follow the engineered labs and this might be yours. And I am shipping it worldwide, so wherever you are, best believe I will find you. I will find you. And ship you this giveaway. We did see the gadolinite stone before, the black heavy stone, and interestingly enough, gadolinium, it's not included in that stone. I would think that the element also existed in the stone, but it actually wasn't. It was also discovered in Sweden, in a place called Westeros, roughly an hour and a half away from here, where one of the biggest nuclear fuel fabrication factories in Europe is. And I am trying my best to get you in there and show you how nuclear fuel is fabricated. So besides gadolinium, holmium was also discovered in Sweden and interestingly enough named after Stockholm and that makes a total of something like 9 to 11 elements discovered in this area. It's a little bit debatable. You know, I just don't like pineapple pizza. Well, you don't like pineapple pizza? Anyone who puts pineapple on pizza should burn in hell! If there were 9 or 11 and a total of 23 elements discovered in the whole of Sweden which given the size of Sweden and the number of people that are in the country, it's quite impressive the impact that they had in tech and science. Thanks so much for joining me in this tour of the Uterby mine. Let me know what you thought in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on the bell notification icon. It's been Elina, your friendly nuclear physicist. And until next time, stay curious, stay nuclear. Okay, now you have to get home without breaking all of this. <laughs>